Hey Fern, thanks for joining me again for another chat on my podcast show. How are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you. So what's been happening since we chatted last time? We chatted in June last year um, mm. to record episode 27 uh, for my podcast show. So for any of our listeners who want to hear more of Fern, go and listen to episode 27 and you'll learn all about Fern and the work that she does. Um, for the purpose of this episode, I wanted to catch up and see what happened with 2020 being such a turbulent year for a lot of us. How did it unfold for you? It's not until now that I'm actually really being able to digest it or process what was happening last year. And the start of this year was still really heavy for me, um, like January, and I thought it would be a whole fresh start and I would feel really motivated because it was slow last year, obviously, um, which was a blessing. But in terms of wanting to grow my business and grow my offerings, it didn't feel so right. Um, and I expected this year to just be like magic, turn to the new year. And it wasn't. I've only just found my groove since February started and feeling that beautiful excitement now of what's coming. So I don't know whether I was just picking up still um, the unknown was still there, that instability. We had another lockdown and it just was hard to kind of get myself in a space of visioning when everything can shift so quickly. So I feel really good now and I feel excited. My clients are coming a lot. It is beautiful. My circles are full. Yeah, it's really, really amazing where I'm at. So I haven't told you this yet, but our chat was the third most listened to chat on my podcast show for 2020 for guest really? interviews. Yeah. How cool it must is that? Be, it must be my friends and family jumping on and watching it. That's great. That's, <laughs> That's great so though. Lovely. But do you know what you, I think I said this to you last time, you activated me. Like I literally haven't been in front of another camera for an interview and you are this person that does this for me <laughs> that makes me step into it it's really funny i actually say that to my clients when they come in mm. to see me especially if they're they're unconscious of what's about to happen i, I yes. actually pre-warn them coming to see me is going to open up <laughs> new and wonderful areas of your life that perhaps you hadn't thought you could explore before are you, are you ready yeah but you do it with such yeah there's such an ease and such um like it feels so natural with you like I've done it a million times I don't <laughs> I don't <laughs> at all I love it because it's a soul chat and that's what yes. I want for my podcast show is just to be a casual candid chat about the topics that I'm passionate about yes and and I think when I, when I get the opportunity to chat with guests who are just as passionate, mm. like that's where the magic is mm. for me and it fills my heart up and, you know, and I just, I've always thought some of the wonderful chats that I've had with my soul sisters, I wish I could bottle up for record so that everyone could listen to them if they're interested. Yeah. You know what? Something guys started doing after... So I did my meditation teacher training last year, towards the end of last year. And we did this one weekend, we did a lot on our throat, chakra and expression and speaking from our heart and our soul, our truth. And um, something I had never done before, I usually will write when I, you know, want to process stuff, but I just got my phone out and recorded my voice and one of the one of the rants is you know 25 minutes and it's 
you can hear it in my voice where things I'm really processing emotional and then I feel that just by speaking it you can you know sense the energy shift and I take this deep breath and I have this kind of clarity and realization and it's so powerful to get it out get it out and speak it yeah so mm. this this speaking is powerful for me because yeah it's not so comfortable being on camera for me so to do that it's um it's good <laughs> thank you well thank you for for um sitting in this space with me i really appreciate it oh thank you now we know you're an energy healer uh, you're mm. also a flower essence practitioner meditation mm. teacher and sacred sister circle facilitator now, I feel most of the listeners will understand what an energy healer is and a meditation teacher. So can I ask you, what is a flower essence practitioner? Yes, flower essence. So currently I use Australian bush flower essences. So um, I have the practitioner's kit. So they're, um, I don't um, collect them, but they are essentially the beautiful man in white whose um, company that is, he goes out into the environment and really energetically potent places in the desert and swamps and other places collects the flowers um, and they're placed in water and in the sun, which catches their energetic um, imprint. And then um, there's a mother a mother tincture and then from that we make up blends for clients with particular issues or things that they need support with and the energetic imprint of the flower or healing qualities of that flower help to um, support that person meeting them spirit to spirit and yeah they're absolutely divine i love 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 it <laughs> how do you use the flower essences are they ingested ingested are they sprayed? yep so i also make sprays so you can um spray them so because it's all energy that absolutely works um you can put them in your bath in drinks on your body but if I work with a client after a Reiki session and they're doing a flower essence, they'll take it for two weeks after seven drops um, twice a day. Um, yeah, and it's very, very gentle shifts, um, but it starts to bring consciousness and awareness and heal those parts that, that we need support with. That sounds beautiful. Mm, it's so beautiful. Now, what inspired you to become a sister circle facilitator? Oh, my gosh. Honestly, the craziest thing about it is I had never sat in circle before, but I had gone through this big soul-searching journey, knowing that where I was at as a teacher was not what I wanted to do or be with my life. So I went on a big soul-searching journey and at that time, I had started a floral design business and working with flowers. And I would start feeling their energy. And it was just awakening something in me. And I used to teach workshops, so floral making arrangements and things. And so I loved gathering women to be creative with the flowers. And it was just so you know, amazing in itself. But when I started having my spiritual awakening and finding that part of myself i wanted to create a sacred gathering of women to experience the same magic that you do when we gather but in a more um yeah sacred way connecting to each other and ourselves and our souls so i honestly was guided to um the sister circle training facilitator um, and it literally shifted my whole life that weekend that was about two years ago and when I sat in circle for the first time it was like a deep 
soul remembering. Like I had sat in circle, but not in this lifetime. And it yeah, just awakened something huge. <laughs> so what do you love about sitting in circle? Oh my gosh. Um, I think it is, we know when we are with our girlfriends or women, there's something special and a, a really good place. We're really good at talking about our emotions and things like that. But circle is not just a chat or it's, it's well, the circles I run have, um, it's gathering consciously with intention and that is different for everybody. But there's something really special about turning up and just being seen and heard and loved just as you are without having to be all those things that we present in our everyday life. So it becomes this very safe place to hold space for each other, to just be as we are or whatever our truth is. So, yeah, that's, that's the power of, and I take that really seriously in energetically um, setting the space up so that, that it is a place to go deeper than our everyday interactions. And how for you personally has it added value to your life? Because I'm, I'm assuming that wanting to host a circle um, came as a result of the power of sitting in one and experiencing it for yourself. So for some of our listeners who have never sat in circle or gathered in this way or know nothing about what it is to be in a sacred circle, what value has it brought to you personally? So, so much. I also, yeah, take part in a circle once a month um, that I don't facilitate for that very reason because it has become absolutely um, necessary for me to have that for my self-care and that space for me to work through, consciously work through um, anything that's present for me or presenting in my life. It has, it becomes this, even when I feel resistance about not sharing in circle or, oh, I don't feel like being in circle tonight, if I do and I show up, magic always happens for me. Something always, I get something um, being in that heart-centred space. So it has completely changed the way that I do life outside because it reflects, it's a constant reflection all the time. Um, and to know that I have women to just love, hold and accept me for wherever I'm at, whatever that is, and to celebrate all life's energies flowing through us all the time. It's so special, isn't it? It is. It really is. Because everybody's got something different going on. And I think we've spoken about this before, maybe in our last um, chat about circle being my circles are a no advice giving, only wisdom. And so it becomes this really safe place to express what your truth is. And if somebody resonates with that to share what that experience, what they've gone through with the same thing, you start to see yourself weave with all your sisters and you start to understand the oneness and the not aloneness and the power in somebody else's story, which is your own as well. Mm. Now, I love that you touched on the fact that as a healer, you prioritise your self-care in mm. this way, in sitting in circle. And interestingly enough, and you're not going to be surprised, but this week I wrote a blog about self-care is a lifestyle. And... Um. And don't you love the synchronicity when, <laughs> when you create content like this and then you have a conversation the next day that affirms what you're feeling, what you're right. talking about and what you want to share? Yeah. So, so let's discuss that. Why is it so important? 
for self-care to be part of your being and your lifestyle as a healer yourself? Well, we can talk about what it's like when I'm not doing that. Let's right? do it. So you know what it feels, well, I know what it feels like when it all gets too much. I have been giving out, you know, I'm a mum like you are, um, a wife. We as space holders and energy healers, um, the work is huge to hold containers for people. Um, it can be very heavy work and it's incredible, but I hold space and I, I give my all in my, to my clients all the time. My, I show up 100%. So when that starts to get depleted, I can feel myself want to, this is how it's just like, ugh, shut it all out, it's too much. And often I realise with myself, I, I would get to that place and it would go dark and yucky and I don't want to engage in the world. And that's because I'm literally putting out all the out and not doing anything for myself in that way so that's you know when you know what that feels like you can't not do self-care can't not because then when I'm in my best place um, that's when everything flows really beautiful so it is absolute everything and I realized something really interesting too for me to go and book an energy healing, and it's a big, sometimes a big financial commitment um, to pay somebody. And I realised that block of, oh, I can't pay, I'm not going to pay for that. I'm the same energy I want my clients to be able to step into to say, I am important enough to invest in myself. I have to hold that as well. Yeah. And I need somebody to listen to me and to hold space. That is the power, just to be listened to and me to unload. It's the so simple important. power of that. Yep. So yep. important, isn't it? Just finding that balance yep. and giving to ourselves in whatever way that feels right. Yeah. And that could be anyway. Like I love to boogie board. Yes. Right. Like, you know, yes. it's, I always say it doesn't always have to be, well, boogie boarding is a spiritual experience, but it doesn't always have to be a spiritual event oh. that you have to attend to. Just go with what feels right for you. I love that. When the teacher training I did for meditation is instinctive meditation and it's all about um, listening to our natural instincts. Literally what you said, it's, yeah, sometimes we need stillness and peace and healing in that way. And other times we need to move and feel invigorated or um, attend to a part of ourselves like that needs spontaneity or thrill or, you know, there's part where all these parts and when you're tuned into yourself and you give yourself that permission and that's all it is, is to attend to that need, that fills us. And that's different for everyone. I think that's really right. And I'm just um, writing down what you're referring to. And I'll ask you to um, pass on the links so that yeah. we can share that with anyone who's interested in instinctive meditation yes. training. Um, we might find that some of our listeners are like, well, I resonate with that. And I might look into that further for myself, right? Absolutely. I you know that my journey has only started with that meditation um that type of meditation and it it's phenomenal it is phenomenal there's none of this shutting down parts of yourself to shut off your mind or to still you know to go against your all of ourselves it's welcoming all of it and intending to whatever that need is and that becomes meditation when you go into your own inner world and when you boogie board you would absolutely be meditating oh absolutely yeah absolutely would be yeah I think any experience that helps you to feel one 
with yes. life yes. is meditation. It is. So, you know, just follow your bliss, follow your curiosity, your excitement, and you'll be guided in the That's direction it. you need to go. I love how you said that. Follow your bliss. So for our listeners who perhaps are unfamiliar with circles, yeah. what would normally happen in a circle that you would host? So can you take us through how the circle would um, unfold and what they could expect to experience in, <laughs> I was in gonna Fern's say, way? <laughs> Fern's way. Um, always start with a beautiful welcome and I'm a hugger so I always ask can I hug first and I love to just welcome people with warmth and love um, make a cup of tea and settle into circle I always open with a blessing to um, call in our guides and beings that are supporting us and to open sacred space. And each woman calls themselves into circle by calling their name and saying that I bring my light to this circle and lighting their candle. Um, we sometimes do introductions or right at the start of circle or what called you to circle. But anybody that doesn't um, feel like talking, there's full permission not to. I find generally most people come and they want to, um, but on the rare occasion, if you don't, are not feeling it, you show up exactly how you are. And I've had women turn up not feeling very good or something's happened before circle and they're not good and they get to just sit there and be as they are. Um, and then we do meditation, which has different themes or something, but it's a guided meditation. Um, and then either we do a ritual, depending on what's um, happening, or some journaling or sharing. Um, I bring my flower essences often and we use the flower essences or make flower essences. So it just depends what fills the space or if it's a full moon or something. Um, and then sharing of wisdom and then closing blessing. And we always do some oracle cards at the end and a chat and goodbye. Does that... <laughs> Yeah, it makes Summer. me want to move to Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome. You're Thank always you. welcome. <laughs> now, we personally have some exciting news to share about a collaboration that we're doing together. And yes. we're going to be hosting a half-day autumn soul circle here on the Sunshine Coast oh. where I'm so excited. <laughs> I... I'm so excited. Just, yeah, I feel like, like I need to do something to get that out. <laughs> I know. Like on camera. For, I'm just feeling, yeah. For our listeners, we came together uh, up at Gardner's Falls at Mullaney oh. a few weeks ago to brainstorm what our circle would look like. And we, we basically planned it and brainstormed it together. And then I said to Fern, I don't want to host it. I want to. I want to be a participant. <laughs> we both. This, this we both are so like, good. We're going to this circle. Who's going to run it for us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so we good. are hosting it, and and we want to invite you if you're listening today to come along because it's going to be a really special event. Mm -hmm. And so, Fern, what are you excited about most about? our Auden Soul Circle? I am excited to join with you. Let's just say that. Because as I said to you, I feel, you know, we feel obviously a connection and how it's happened. And there's a beautiful resonance with us. Um, I love your energy and your warmth 
and your that you just bring out and it's really nice to join with somebody like yourself um, to do this together I'm excited to do it together I think that's where the magic for you and I will be to yeah bounce off each other will be super fun but I'm excited also to come up the coast I've wanted to go up the coast or down the coast I've had people um, ask me before so I'm excited to come up and meet some new people and make new connections as well yes what are you excited about what's I th I'm what's excited about collaborating with you I, I feel with the ideas that we've both shared that our our strengths are going to complement each other and I, I really yeah. think that that's where the magic is going to be i'm really excited about the activities that we have planned me too the day and like i said i think i'd like to be participating <laughs> are, we, are we gonna talk about that or are we keeping something well let's let's so talk about one thing yeah what do you think so are we are you, you thinking the same thing as me <laughs> what do you want to talk about well i mean the mandala creation right is an obvious choice for us Correct. um because it's something that um i do a lot in my work and it's absolutely incredible and you're so excited about playing with the flowers and creating and so um we will be you can use it in such a different way but what we thought for this circle is that we would create a big group mandala where everybody's co-creating so you have that beautiful symbolism of everybody bringing their own essence to the collective um, and how we all make up the whole um, but it is literally breathtaking sometimes I can't even cope watching it unfold because it's so beautiful. The flowers and the botanicals are so beautiful. So we will um, place our intentions for the new season coming in into our mandala, which is going to hold a really important energy for something else you're going to facilitate with the mandala. So the energy that's going to be created is going to be very embodied by creating it and then know we'll be able to just feel it breathe it um yeah flood our whole being with the healing power of the mandala and flowers oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> it's, we're both just feeling into this and it's just <laughs> oh my god it feels mind-blowing and mm. it hasn't even been created well it has been created it's been created yes. in in our in our um in our minds and in our hearts yes and and so the mandala is going to serve as an altar and it's it's going to be imbued with everybody's individual intention and that is actually going to be the central point for the entire afternoon absolutely and what i would love to add into that too so that people know um when we dismantle the mandala, everybody gets to collect um, back up parts of it to take home and use further in ritual, um, which we would talk about in circle how to do that and continue to work with that um, energy of the mandala and the day and the intentions and it's a really beautiful beautiful way to end and take take a piece of the magic that happened now we are holding this event on the same weekend as autumn equinox so do you want to share with our listeners what is the significance of holding the event on this particular weekend so our whole idea for our uh, autumn soul circle was to use the potent energy of that time so it's like a portal for us to um, 
tap into to leave behind the season before. So what's taken place during summer, um, which was our greatest time of light and growth and action um, and start to move into autumn and starting to, which prepares us for winter, our time of rest. So autumn holds the energy of letting go, just like the leaves releasing and starting to reflect on what we're grateful for and letting go of anything that hasn't been serving us. So this particular weekend being that actual autumn equinox um, energy portal will be incredible to tap into that and then align ourselves with the natural seasons and the cycle, the ever flow that we go on. And it's, it's a beautiful way of connecting to our natural earth and our natural world. It's a really special time too for, for people like ourselves who are connected so deeply to nature to be able to consciously and intentionally mm. sit together with like-hearted women to be able to actually acknowledge this. Because I think for a lot of us, we acknowledge it personally, mm. but it may not be something that we actually share or discuss with anyone, you know, um, our connection to nature. So what a wonderful way to, to do this in partnership. How powerful. I know it's really, really powerful. And the more that my work, um, I have people now coming to me to birth mandalas around the seasons and the elements. And um, it's the more that you connect to that, the messages and the guidance and the awareness of parts of ourselves um, that is reflected in our beautiful natural earth it's it's everything and the more that I align with that my life um, flows really easily so our event's going to be on Sunday the 21st of March yes. and at the time of recording this chat um, we're just setting up the links so that you can yes. you can go and buy tickets so I'm hoping all going well that by the time, if you are listening to this right now, that there'll also be a link below this podcast or wherever you're watching this on YouTube, that you can go across and find out more and then purchase your ticket and come and join us because we will be limiting numbers. This is an event that we would like to stay intimate yeah. And, and so for us, that both resonates with us. So if, if you are feeling it, I, I encourage you, grab, grab your ticket as soon as you can, if it feels right for you. Yeah, you will fit. Yeah, that's exactly right. You will feel the call and it will feel mm -hmm. right. There'll be something to say, I have to be there. I need to be there. And that's it. Yeah. Just know. yeah. Very, very cool. Now, is there anything else you'd love to share with us before we wrap up our chat today? What is there anything special happening for you or any offerings that you well, are offering personally that you want to talk about? Yeah, it is. It's funny how things are presenting. And I was just telling you that I'm doing my level two sister circle training um, weekend which will happen before just before this beautiful circle and we are diving level two dives more into the medicine wheel and the seasons and the elements and rituals and plant medicine and ancestral work so I'm super excited to bring more of that into my work and it's really starting to I'm really starting to see where I'm guided with my offerings and it is going to, going to start being a lot more aligned with the seasons, exactly what we're doing um, for the autumn equinox. Yeah. Yes. And I'm really excited to see how our partnership is mm. going to grow 
and blossom as well. Oh, me too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fern, for joining me today. I'm so excited about our Autumn Soul Circle. It's, it's beyond. I know. Just saying it like. Just how easily it all come together as well with our yeah. ideas and our planning. It was just like, bam, bam, bam. Yes, this is going to be brilliant. But also what I love about you is that we, although we have a general um, structure or plan, it's all going to be intuitively led, mm -hmm. of course, um, and space and freedom to go where, where the group needs to go. Yeah. Yes, and that's something that we can't plan for. No. So it's, it's no. wonderful that we are able to hold space in this way. Yep for whatever healing is going to come through on yeah. that day. And, and I, I always know through my circles that I'm always learning. I'm always being surprised, even though I shouldn't be surprised, but right. the universe just keeps surprising me. And, yes. you know, that's, and, and unless you're there experiencing it, it's, it's something, it's not tangible unless you're physically participating in some way. So that is what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, same, same, same. So thank you. Have a great day and um, I can't wait to see you again. Okay, I can't wait to give you a big squeeze. <laughs>